So you know how when you make a read request to an AppWrite database collection and you get back that standard response? Well, in many cases, that's not enough. We might need to modify that request to get back exactly what we want in the format that we want it. And this is something that we can accomplish with AppWrite queries. So in this video, what I'm gonna do is actually go ahead and show you how we can add these to our request and then how we can actually modify our searches so we can actually search by text values, how we can combine queries together, maybe sort information by number values, by dates, and just limit a response to get exactly what we want. So maybe we want the first five instead of the standard 25. So we're gonna do all of this with the AppWrite Web SDK. We'll start writing our queries. So let's just go ahead and jump right into it and get started. Okay, so for this video, I've already set up a collection. I've added some data into that collection. And I also made sure that we have different attribute types. So we have string values, Boolean fields, date time fields, integer values. So this way we can actually test out multiple query types. Now on the front end, I only want you focusing on this list documents method called from the databases class that I've set up. Uh, we're not gonna pay attention to the configuration. That's not the focus. All I'm doing is calling get data so I can see this value, see it console out and actually trigger the function. So let's just go ahead and talk about the list documents method before we get started, because this is where we're writing our queries from. So the default behavior here is to simply return back the first 25 documents in a collection and then give us back the total of documents in that specific collection. Now, if we wanna write some queries here and extend this, we pass in a third parameter here. So we have the database ID, the collection ID, and the third parameter is gonna be an array. And the reason why it's an array is because we can actually chain multiple queries together and you can actually see how this will work in a second. So if we wanna write our first query, let's just go ahead and import the query class here. And from the query class is where we can start writing these methods from. So we'll just do query and the first one I'm gonna use is gonna be equal. So essentially this is an exact match and we have to pass in the attribute name. So let's say I'm looking for the name value and specifically I wanna find Dennis Ivy. So if I run this search, we're gonna get back Dennis Ivy. Now, if I misspell this, let's say I just do Dennis I. Now it's not gonna find anything because that match needs to be exact. Now we do have different methods to actually make this work right here, but we'll focus on those in a second. So. Let's say I make this Dennis Ivy here and I wanna search for not just Dennis Ivy, I wanna be able to do like an or operation here. So what I could do is go ahead and make this an array and this will still work right here, but I can also look for Dennis Ivy and Jane Doe. So if I spell this right, then we get back Dennis Ivy and Jane Doe. Now what I also could do here is I can actually remove Jane Doe and I can use the not equal value. So let's just do not equal like that. And this is gonna look for everyone that's not Dennis Ivy here. So it'll return back six items here and there's no Dennis Ivy to be found. So it's just the opposite. And pretty much every method has an invert and you'll see how this works in a second. So uh, let's actually go back to equal. And I wanna show that this works with integers here. So let's say we wanna look for followers. So followers, and we wanna find everybody that has 280,000 followers. So if I run that search, let's see, I went too high there. Now here we get back Danny Thompson. So it works with an integer value. We simply pass in the attribute that we're searching against and then the value here. Now with that search, if we're searching against string values, it's very common to do like a partial match here. So what we need to do here is I'm actually gonna show you the starts with query here. So starts with is gonna give us like a string value, but as long as the beginning part of that text matches, it'll return back some kind of result. So for this, let's just do query dot starts with, and we're gonna look for name, and you're gonna see this as a common practice here where we do the attribute and then the value, and let's just do D. So if we do D, we get back three values here. So Dennis, Ivy, Dennis Ivanov, Danny Thompson. Now, if we do DA, we'll just get back Danny Thompson. And then if we do DE, it'll return back the two Dennis's. Now, the opposite of starts with is gonna be ends with, and essentially this goes to the end of the string. So let's say we look for Ivy, and it's just gonna go ahead and find Dennis Ivy because that's what the string ends with. Now, the next method we're gonna call is not a filter method. It's simply a way to modify data, and that is query.select here. 
Now, what this is going to do here is it's going to allow us to select the attributes that we want to respond with. So right now we get back an array, we get back all the objects and we can see every single attribute that the document contains, but we might not want to do that. Maybe we want to limit what's actually returned. So what we can do here is we can select name and we'll just select followers. And now if I run this, we're going to get back a response. We have Dennis here and we only see followers name and then by default still the database ID and collection. Now if I remove ends with, we get back the original response, but now it looks a little bit cleaner because we're not returning back the entire object. So let's go ahead and move on to the next methods here. And I wanna start comparing numbers. So we're gonna look at greater than, greater than or equal to, less than, and start comparing these values. And this works well for numbers and dates. So let's just go ahead and do greater than, and for the attribute, we have to do followers. And for the number, let's just do 20,000 here. So we'll run this. And there we go. We have three responses here. Let's go ahead and do less than. So if we do less than, now it returns back four. And we have everybody with less than 20,000 followers. And then if we do less than equal, I believe it's equal like this. If we actually have an exact value and someone has 20,000 followers, then it makes sure to include that person. So it's either less than or equal to that specific value. So we'll just let that autofill. And what I wanna do is I wanna show you how to search between a specific range. So what we could do is actually just chain these together and we can just throw in a greater than search. So we have a less than or equal to 20,000. And then let's say we want everybody that has more than 10,000 followers. So we'll just finish this up, followers and we'll add in 10,000 and this will give us everybody between 10,000 and 20,000 followers. So we simply chain it together and it works great. So if we throw in 30,000, then we get back three responses and that's how we create our own range. This also works great with dates. So at this point, let's just go ahead and look at limiting queries and also sorting. So in order to actually do this, we're just gonna go ahead and use the query method again. And we have this order ascend method and order descend method. So if I do by descending, this will give us the response with the highest follower count to the least. So we simply throw in the attribute and that's it. So we just do followers and let's run that. And Danny Thompson will be at the top here. And then if we change that to ascending, that'll just reverse that. And now Dennis Ivanov will be at the very top here. Now, if we wanna limit the response, we could just keep this ascending order and we can just do query dot limit. And right now we only have seven items in our database here or in our collection, but let's say we only want the first two items. So we can change that and we get back the first two and modify that as we need. So I have one more method to show, and this is gonna be a search method. So we can go ahead and get rid of query.limit and order ascending, and we'll just add in query.search. And I'll explain why we waited to add this and what it does. So essentially the reason why we waited is because it does require an extra step for this method to work. In order for the search method to work, we need to add in a database index. It's very easy to set up. I won't go into what an index is, but essentially it allows us to speed up our database queries and for those to run more effectively. Now, the search method, it allows us to look for a specific word within a string. So let's say we had an attribute called body and somewhere in that string, we had the word uh, like fox in there. And we're actually gonna do this as an example. So typically we have our starts with search, which means we have to match everything before it, before the actual word is met, or we have the ends with search, and we also have the exact match, but we only want one specific word in here. And that's a very common search for people to perform. Now, what this will allow us to do is I actually put in a sentence for one of the names here. I added a new value into the database. It'll allow us to look for the word fox in the sentence, the quick, the quick brown fox jumped over the moon. I think that's what I added. So right now, if I try to run this, I'm gonna get this error and it's just simply not gonna work. So in order for this to actually work, I need to jump back into my console here and I need to go into indexes within my collection and we're gonna create that index. And we're not gonna specify a new name for that. We're just gonna do index one for the key. And we need to do full text here. And we're gonna specify the attribute to be name here. And we're just gonna create the index. So now that that's created in my documents, I have this document called, or that has a name value of the quick brown fox jumped over the moon. Let's see somewhere here, if I go to data, 
Yes, I have it. And I'm going to look for the word Fox. So it starts with search would require us to do all of that. Ends with would have us do all of this and contains or an equal to search wouldn't work. But if I go ahead and just run this right here, now we're going to get the response and we get back the name that contains that specific word. So we have an entire sentence, but the search method allowed us to specifically find the word Fox in there. So that's why it's very effective. And that's also why we needed to create an index for it. All right, so that does it for this video. I hope you all learned a lot and be sure to leave me feedback in the comment section. If you have any questions, I'll be sure to watch that and try to respond as fast as I can. And make sure you're subscribed to the AppRite YouTube channel and I'll see you all in the next video.